Hello boys and girls, welcome to part 3 of the Magnuson Supercharger install on the 19 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 3.6 JL. Excuse the flickering, I actually ordered some LED shop lights. My camera doesn't do well with fluorescent lights. Anyway, in, in today's episode the lower intake gets installed, the upper intake also gets installed and little things here and there. So, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if this actually helps you out. I hope it does. And enjoy. Okay, make sure that clicks in. Okay, now this bracket, it's gonna go here, back of the valve cover on the, on the driver's side. There is a small issue. The EGR tube is in the way, about a quarter of an inch, it needs to go back. Okay, so we somehow need to bend it back, okay. So actually I got it on top of the steering shaft. Okay, let's see if that was enough. Perfect, with a tiny bit of clearance. Actually, if I can remove this. Okay, support bracket in. All right, moving on to the lower intake. First, remove the fuel rails. This is T30, using T30. Yeah, fuel is going to spill. Alright, as you can see, two injectors came out and four of them stayed. So, we got new injectors, so this, take the fuel rail. We just need the fuel rail. Okay, make sure all the O-rings came out. Now, the new injectors. Okay, make sure you use lubrication. I always use oil tiny amount on the o-ring, on the blue ones the blue ones go into the fuel rail the orange red go into the intake without forcing the injectors gently drive them in kind of all the way Okay, now we can oil up the orange O-rings that will go into the intake, the lower intake. This is actually a very important step, oiling this up. If you don't do that, you won't be able to pop them in. Okay, now this part on the lower intake that's sticking out, that's where the passage on the fuel rails is going to be. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna use more oil on this middle one here. Okay, I've noticed you wanna start from the middle one. And then work your way out. I'm actually pushing quite a bit. Come on, why won't you go in? Still got fuel in the fuel rail. I'm gonna try the injector on its own. Okay. okay, now time to flip it over and switch the intake gaskets. Okay, use the three and a half centimeter or 35 millimeter long bolts. So we're just gonna take four. Don't get confused with these. These are four, 40 millimeters long. There, I know there are only, there's only four in kind of one package, but the three and a half are these. These will torque down to 10 newton meters, which is 7.4 foot pounds of torque. Mm -hmm. Then using these four, 40 millimeter bolts and these four 60 millimeter bolts so let's see so the 60 will go on the outside and the 40 millimeter ones will go on the inside here actually you might as well tape this off now And remove the tape, make room and remove the tape. Actually, before I remove this tape, I'm gonna zip tie this, some of this stuff here. Looks all right to me. Okay, now it's ready for the lower intake. sure it's nice and center okay so these will all of them will torque down to 12 newton meters which is 8.9 and this is the sequence so this being the back this is the front okay so one and don't torque it down all the way like you know this one bolt do like a three step even even a four step probably use a regular ratchet for this it's 
start from one again. Let's go six. I'm gonna go eight point nine. Now I'm actually gonna take a short break and retorque them again. Okay, after rechecking the torque, connect all the injectors back. Make sure you push the red tabs in. Listen for that click. I actually forgot to remove this plastic way from way before, so I'm gonna do it now. So many hoses. This one, this one I'm gonna run underneath these hoses, the fuel, the fuel line here. Click and tab. Okay, now grab the intake pipe and remove this sensor without breaking it. Okay, so turn counterclockwise until it locks and pull. All right, connect the VMV valve here. and find a spot for the harness just use whatever you can use your imagination okay i'm gonna leave it for now like i said before before i like to tidy up everything once i know where everything is because a lot of times you tie something up and then a new thing new hose new harness whatever uh, and you end up comes up and you end up having 10 zip ties instead of maybe just three or four okay so here we have the uh, upper intake slash cooler and looks like things are in the way like this uh, EGR cooler pipe was it so let's remove that for now they did mention to move it or bend it back this line towards the battery many many steps ago so we can just do it now doesn't matter okay so it's time to fix the back up a bit zip tie make it look neat Although you're never going to see it, but we got to secure it. Okay, I don't know where this one's going to end up, either here or behind this, this plastic here, not sure yet. Okay, I'm going to test fit the upper intake again. Still the same line is in the way. Okay. So it looks like this all this harness needs to go underneath the intake and this pipe that's interesting that may actually go underneath as well so let's try it again This is not good. 
I don't like it. I skipped a few steps to see if this mounts anywhere because of, of this thing. And I found this bracket, you know, five steps. Here's the bracket. That's two steps after the upper intake install. That's when you when they want you to install it. Why wouldn't you want to do it now? So let's just put this bracket, slip it in there. Like that. And they also tell you to install the AIT and the map sensors in before the you install the intake. I'm going to do it after. Okay, so after playing with it for a little bit, this line will touch the upper intake a little bit, just on the back part of it. But it should be alright. There's really not much I can do about it. It's not pinch or anything, it's just, it's just touching it. Alright, make sure all this is clean. This gasket was already, or seal, was already installed on this lower intake. But if you gotta install it, use oil as well. Use some kind of lube to push it in. Okay, before you attempt to install this, remove the little radiator. Okay, after you removing all the 8mm bolts, remove the four 10mm bolts on the side here. Okay. I gotta remove these short pipes as well. They didn't feel like packaging this separately okay now we can install this it looks like it's eight bolts not seven that's why instructions say seven but you know there's eight and they give eight bolts all right so we're gonna install this They're still, they're all the same length. The bolts. And this one seems too shallow. You're tucking the injector harnesses right underneath here. There's plenty of room. Make sure this moves. It's not pinched. Okay. You look, place upper intake on lower. Install seven M8 bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And this little bracket, this here, this will not reach this bolt. I'm gonna zip tie this bracket to this hose here. Well, the hole is deep enough. I'm gonna run a tap through there. This is an M8 1.25. Okay, so this is all right. It does go, the bolt does go all the way down. The problem is right here. The head of the bolt is hitting this uh, badly machined upper intake. So I gotta trim this down. There we go. Okay, so 25 which is 
18.4 in foot pounds of torque. So this is the sequence number one. And again, do it in steps. Should have filed that more. <laughs> 